if you had a knife in your brain? What would happen? You'd get the point of your question, maybe? Puns. Puns. <laughs>Hey everybody, Trace here for D News with Reyna from SourceFed Nerd. Hey Reyna, how's your brain? Um, fine, thanks. Just like this guy with a knife in his brain. Ouch. A 57-year-old Chinese man was walking down the street in Guangyang, China when a knife accidentally dropped off an eight-story balcony and landed right on slash in his head. This man claims his head felt heavy, but he didn't understand why until a shop owner pointed out a giant knife sticking out of his skull. Maybe he should have stayed sharp. Ah, uh, maybe he was trying to get an edge. This guy. Cut through all the noise. Get a handle on the situation. Oh, okay, so settle down. Okay, sorry. I think they got the point. Brain injuries are always serious. Luckily with this guy, the knife only hit his flesh and not his brain box. Stuff like this is newsworthy, but real brain injuries happen every day to regular people. Concussions and mild brain injuries happen to people who simply fall down or run into things. But of course, it's also an issue in the NFL and NHL and with military personnel rotating to and from Iraq and Afghanistan. In fact, a new study in neurology found that brain injuries happen even with mild or moderate falls. So watch out, clumsy people. Concussions and mild brain injuries add up because the brain is an intensely complex network, including two lobes, each with a forebrain, midbrain, and hindbrain. Uh -huh. <laughs> and within each of those are dozens of smaller brain regions. More severe injuries can cause life-altering problems. Depending on where a brain injury occurs, a victim could have to relearn to walk or speak. They might lose memories or the ability to recognize faces, or worse, they could become paralyzed or forget who they even are altogether. However, there are cases that are a little more crazy. In 1848, Phineas Gage filled a drill hole with gunpowder while working for the railroad. Moments later, the gunpowder accidentally ignited, shooting a metal rod through his skull and frontal lobe. The rod flew out and Phineas was taken to a doctor Ugh. in 1848, so I don't know what they did for him exactly. Oh. But. Though horrible for Phineas, this is one of the coolest things to ever happen to neuroscience. Gage's frontal lobe was completely mangled and the doctor was able to heal him well enough to allow him to live for another 11 years. He could walk and talk, recognize family and friends. It was a miracle to the doctors at the time, but his brain was altered forever. Though unknown at the time, the prefrontal cortex is what makes you, you. The frontal cortex controls executive function, motivation, emotion, and behavior. So though it was 160 years ago, there are still reports that after his incident, Gage was never himself again. He lacked the part of his brain that made him Phineas. And he swore a lot, apparently which wasn't good for the nice folks of the 1850s. According to the brain injury team at the Rehabilitation Institute of Chicago, brain injuries to the left side of the brain will cause difficulty speaking or understanding language, while the right deals with spatial abilities and judgment. The back of the brain controls vision, and the brain stem controls basic body functions like breathing, blood pressure, swallowing, the stuff you don't usually have to think about. There are also hollow spaces inside your brain called ventricles. The spaces are filled with cerebrospinal fluid, and injury can result if those ventricles get damaged and can't drain properly. Had the knife hit the man's brain, it would have caused instant damage and the doctors would have had to try to minimize the secondary damage. Like inflammation and stuff like that. Doctors are not great at fixing the brain. Actually, they suck at it. After trauma, we can stimulate misfiring neurons and hope they'll get back to normal, reduce inflammation, or even purposefully reroute signals around damaged areas. But repairing a broken brain, that is out of our capability for now. Luckily, brain plasticity, or its ability to recover faculties, is entirely possible. And neuroscience has used examples like Phineas Gage's or former Arizona Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords's survival as examples of brain plasticity. Ultimately, we've got a lot to learn about the brain box and the wrinkled mass inside of it. What do you guys want to know about the brain? We are fascinated and hope that you are too, so ask us a question and maybe we will answer it on D News. You can leave a comment down below and be sure that you subscribe so you can see the answer in a future video. Thanks for coming by, Reyna. Where can people find you if they want to, you know, come see you and stuff? Oh, over on SourceFed and SourceFed Nerd. Sounds awesome. Bye.